Hello my lovelies and welcome back to All About Jane. You guys know how I love throwing a good dinner party. What's a dinner party without all the right tools? I met my beautiful friends home today to have a look at an extensive dining wear collection. I can't wait to share it with you guys. Champagne is always the best idea. Cheers! Cheers. Wow, Wendy, this table looks like a lot of effort. Thank you. It is a little bit, but well, for yeah, you, but it's all oh, worth it. Look at oh, how yes. gorgeous it is. So, I have a question. I noticed that. The tableware is different for each setting. That's yes. right. And it's deliberately made that way because sometimes we have different theme, different cuisine, and I think that is the whole fun of mm -hmm. table setting. You know, of course the food is important, but unfortunately I cannot cook to save my life. But the only thing that I really <laughs> enjoy is dressing up dressing the, table. the table. Exactly. Yes. I call this my masat masat, you know, like my little toys. Oh, yeah. you, as a young girl, you will play with tiny dolls. dolls. Looking at what she did for this table setting, I think that we may not always need a complete set of a particular design because that makes it all the more interesting. Let's hear it from Wendy why she does it this way. You're absolutely right, Jamie. So if I could just draw your attention to say, for example, this two set, which I think is a good example of, I mean, in my opinion, mm -hmm. mixing and matching. So as you can see, I mean, these two are Hermes. But different collection, this is a H deco and that's the mosaic collection, the platinum mosaic collection. Mm -hmm. Well, you need a, kind of like a common theme to pull it together. In this case, the color scheme is kind of similar. They're like black and white and neutral mm -hmm. gray. There is a similar theme joining everything together, even though I do have enough for the whole table. And I feel like the key to table setting, but this is just how I like to do it, I like to give it a little bit more depth because I feel like when everything is the same too and, matching, and too it may matching, look bland. it may look bland. Yes. Too matching, matchy is beautiful, but also easily replicated because all you need to do is uh -huh. to go to a shop. Yes. Give me this collection, everything. everything. <laughs> yes, anyone can do that. That's but true. It takes your personality to add a dash of Jamie in it. Yeah, I definitely learned something new today. I noticed that you don't even need to have the same placements because I buy like eight of everything, even glasses, water glasses, goblets and all that, everything has to match. So what happened was uh, I had an extra two guests and actually I could fit 10 on my dining table. But I only have eight um, pieces of plates and everything for that collection. And when I went to the store to try to get another two settings, they actually didn't have it and it needs to be ordered. It takes four months to order them. And um, yes, I was quite upset. So at, in the end, I had to settle for uh, two designs, which is something like that, to try to match it with that collection. Well, it worked. But now I know that I don't have to collect the same collection of everything. Oh, wow. another trick that I like to do is sometimes if you may not have eight or something, but mm -hmm. you have four or something. Yes. So you can do four and four. Yes. So I think alternate. Alternate, yes. And yes. so you're yes. turning a mistake, something that happened, accident, into it looked like it's deliberate, but actually it wasn't. It was like, oh, because I didn't have enough. Right. But you do four and four, and then it's like, no, it was meant to be that way. Is your setting is like your stage? You write your own script, how you want it to be done. There's no right or there's no rules to it. I, I feel yeah. anything goes. There are really, no rules. There are no rules. You yeah. decide for yourself how you want to yeah. curate the experience for your guests. Because ultimately, when you invite someone to your house, I feel it's more a matter of what you want them to experience. Right. Next 
question is, okay, I'm sounding like a novice. I don't often put big centerpieces like what you see here. Mm -hmm. uh, Wendy, tell me, when you serve the food and you need to put food in the center? Okay, so very, so very what? good question. Yeah. Because when it comes to floral arrangement, there are many factors to consider. Of course, number one would be what is the layout of your table? Because mine is a square table, the only way I can play around with decorating is a centerpiece. If I have a long table, which is a more common style, then it will be repetition, I feel, which we always see, like, you know, maybe yes. three sets of different mm -hmm. floral arrangements, mm -hmm. which I feel is, is actually a lot easier. How you do the serving style, because mine is a centerpiece style, which mm -hmm. means sharing of uh, food. It's not possible. It's not, it's not ideal. Right. right. So would you say that it is all right if, let's say, but before dinner is served, we remove it. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Then we place our food. Yes, that you can do that memory. as well. Yes, after you take your photos. Yeah. <laughs> yes, of course. Yes, you can do all... that. Personally, I always like it portioned individually. I just feel like yes. it's neater. But and... do you not think that this centerpiece is stopping this person sitting here from interacting with the person oh, that's yes, going absolutely. to be over there, right? Definitely, but if I have to choose between allowing the guests to talk to each other and having a beautiful centerpiece, a beautiful oh, centerpiece. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> yeah, a beautiful centerpiece is um, of utmost importance. <laughs> other place settings mm -hmm. and of course we have this one with a, a napkin that looks like a newspaper it's yes. very interesting and would you like to share a little bit on how you came up with two place settings sure really this started with the placemat the humble mm -hmm. placemat and i feel like that should be the foundation of how you set a table or build your tableware collection in general. Sometimes it's not about getting everything at once. Mm -hmm. It's about seeing a piece that you like. You may not know what it's for initially, but you like it. So I'll pick it up first. I didn't know it would match initially, but I just like it. And slowly along the way, I started accumulating. And this really started during last circuit breaker and I feel like, okay, now I will, I'm, I'm kind of bored. I'm yeah. like, I need to entertain myself. And I was like, okay, now I have the pieces, they're coming together. It's really exciting mm -hmm. when you see the pieces coming together. Yeah. I'm like, I just need that key item to tie everything yes. in. Yes. So guys, you know, um, yeah, we, we try and be as honest as possible on my YouTube channel. And <laughs> another one of my um, pet peeves would be People who ask me <laughs> <laughs> That's your pet peeve <laughs> That's my pet peeve when I'm shooting, okay? That, that will be the, the outtake now <laughs> So guys, uh, we want to be as honest as possible <laughs> on this YouTube channel, right? You know I'm always honest about stuff I, and I don't like to mince my words So another one of my ultimate pet peeves would be like if I'm hosting a dinner party and I invited someone and last minute this person would ask oh can I bring another person so I want to know what is the politically correct way to um, question like that knowing that you have already maybe have the maximum seating capacity and you really cannot squeeze that extra person or maybe you don't have an extra set of dining yeah. wear that Matches, which is always my problem but I won't have that problem anymore but you know a table can only sit yes, that many unless exactly. you want to sit on my lap mm. normally I would try to accommodate but that's just me because I feel bad to say no but if my table really cannot fit in another person I guess I would have no choice but to say oh I'm sorry you know the I, I max up my capacity but honestly I just feel like you shouldn't even ask that question because you're putting the hostess in, in a, a spot. spot I think it's very inconsiderate for someone to ask that kind of question last minute I think it's very socially unacceptable to do something like that it's socially socially unacceptable for me okay what is your take on someone who wants to start collecting dining wear it's Perfectly fine to mix and match. In fact, the beauty is in mixing and matching the high and low, which is the same for fashion yes, as well. Yes. Because it goes to show that, you know, at the end of the day, it's about taste and style, which is not a function of price because you can buy the most expensive stuff, but if you don't put it nicely, yeah. it doesn't mean anything. I feel like at the end of the day, it's 
about you putting a personal stamp on it. And the story behind it. That, and like the story you behind buy it. something from the flea market. Yes, I feel that's absolutely. That, you know, uh, when yeah. you travel, you see a piece yes. of something that you like. That it is the be best. And, and I feel yeah. like that makes any homeware collection all the more interesting. Mm -hmm. There's the stories behind it. So I see stories like this. Like I found this in, in the flea market. Yeah. Or I found this in a random hole in the wall in the middle of Istanbul or something. It's like a four generation kind of family. I find stories and it adds a lot of dimension to your collection, which is which sets yours apart from anyone else. So I feel like mixing and matching is the way to go because it shows a lot of your personality mm -hmm. in a collection. And ultimately what makes a collection different is the curation. And the curation can only come from your own personal experience, mm -hmm. your own I, your own taste, and that makes it you, and that makes it unique and irreplaceable. How much would a set of this Hermes salad bowl and the platter cost? I think easily more than a gram for both. Because these are the big more. pieces, yeah, we'll yes. be more. A bowl like this could set you down at least eight, nine hundred dollars, not a yeah, thousand. How much do you think this entire table setting costs? Oh, um, just an estimated amount. I don't know, but definitely a few thousand dollars, I think. Sure, a few thousand one bowl, already one thousand dollars. I have get me a no idea as well. Let me gauge. Let me gauge. I think this whole entire setting is nothing less than ten thousand dollars. What do you guys think? Agree. Okay. Agree, right? Yeah. I mean, with the lamp holders, the candle. I got the price of this candle, you know, but it's on my phone. <laughs> I think, yes, it's, it's, it's on my phone, I have the price. It's very expensive. And of course, all these tableware. So I would say that this entire table setting, without the dining table, of course, just the setting on this table would be around 10,000 conservatively. Probably, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, yeah. when you go to somebody's home like Wendy's, right? She has all these amazing settings. Please do not get drunk and break something. Do not be clumsy. Do not bring your kids. <laughs> to the end of this video i hope you all enjoyed this one and learned a thing or two from wendy and me till the next one ciao for now cheers but at six so that was a um, one watching. <laughs> she better be watching <laughs> i'm gonna name her <laughs>